professional course in English. Process Technology – Equipment and Systems Unit 1 – Introduction to Process Equipment and Systems in Chemical Technology In this lecture you will learn Driven or rotary equipment Pumps and compressors Stationary equipment Piping Storage tanks Valves Filters Heat exchangers Fired heaters Furnaces Reactors Distillation towers Extraction and other separation equipment the chemical processing industry is composed of refineries and plants for petrochemical, paper, power generation, and food processing. Process technicians Inspect and maintain equipment Place and remove equipment from service Control documentation Respond to emergencies Troubleshoot system problems Process technicians must have a thorough understanding of equipment and systems. Equipment can be classified as Rotary equipment and stationary equipment Rotary equipment Pumps transfer liquids from place to place Compressors are designed to accelerate or compress gases. Stationary equipment Tanks and pipes are stationary equipment designed to store and contain fluids. Valves are devices used to control the flow of fluids. Filters are another type of stationary equipment, they remove suspended solids from fluids. Heat exchangers transfer energy in the form of heat between two fluids, which do not physically contact each other. Cooling towers remove heat from water. Fired heaters, or furnaces, are used to heat large volumes of raw materials. Boilers provide steam for industrial applications. Reactors are used to combine raw materials, heat, pressure, and catalysts in the right proportions. Distillation towers separate chemical mixtures by the boiling points of the substances in the mixture. Extraction and other separation equipment are aimed to separate different substances. Rotary equipment Pumps and compressors Pumps are classified as positive displacement pumps and dynamic pumps. Positive displacement pumps can be rotary or reciprocating. Dynamic pumps can be centrifugal or axial. Positive displacement pumps Positive displacement pumps displace a specific volume of fluid on each stroke or rotation and can be classified as Rotary pumps Reciprocating pumps Rotary pumps displace fluids by means of rotating screws, gears, vanes, or lobes. Reciprocating pumps move fluids by drawing them into a chamber on the intake stroke and displacing them by means of a piston, diaphragm, or plunger on the discharge stroke. Reciprocating pumps are characterized by a back and forth motion. Centrifugal pumps Centrifugal pumps are devices that move fluids by centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is the force exerted by a rotating object away from its center of rotation. 
The primary principle involves spinning the fluid in a circular motion that propels it outward and into a discharge chute known as a volute. Dynamic compressors Dynamic compressors operate by accelerating gas and converting kinetic energy the energy of movement to pressure. Dynamic compressors are classified as centrifugal compressors, axial compressors. Centrifugal compressors use the principles of centrifugal force. Gases are drawn into a suction eye, accelerated in the impeller, and discharged out the volute. Gases move in a rotary motion from the center of the compressor to the discharge outlet. Axial compressors do not use centrifugal force to increase gas velocity. Air is moved axially along the shaft. Stationary equipment Piping Industrial piping comes in a variety of shapes, designs, and metals to safely contain and transport chemicals. The engineering designer carefully selects the types of materials that are compatible with the chemicals and operational conditions. Piping can be composed of Stainless steel, carbon steel, iron, plastic, specialty metals. The various types of fittings include couplings, unions, elbows, tees, nipples. Plugs Caps Bushings Storage tanks The chemical processing industry uses tanks, drums, bins, and spheres to store chemicals. The materials used in these designs include carbon steel, stainless steel, iron, specialty metals, and plastic. In the pictures you can see the storage tanks such as a dome roof tank and a horizontal cylindrical vessel. Various tank designs are illustrated in Figure 3. Spherical storage tank Hemispheroid tank Open top tank Internal floating roof tank Double wall hemispheroid tank Cone roof tank External floating roof tank Tank Bin Horizontal cylindrical vessel Valves Valves are used to stop, start, restrict, throttle, or direct the flow of fluids. A globe valve places a movable metal disc in the path of a process flow. Ball valves take their name from the ball-shaped, movable element in the center of the valve. A gate valve places a movable gate in the path of a process flow in a pipeline. Filters 
Filters are used in the chemical processing industry to separate solid particles from a fluid by passage through a porous medium. The most common filters are cartridge filters. The replaceable filter medium is self-supporting and attached to a structural core. As material flows through the medium, suspended solids are separated from the fluid. As the pores in the medium fill up, fluid flow is restricted and delta pressure across the body of the filter begins to increase. Redundant filter systems allow a technician to switch to a clean filter and safely remove the dirty cartridges. One common use of large industrial filters is in the water treatment area. Water treatment requirements are linked to three factors, source water quality, how the water will be used, and environmental regulations. The chemical processing industry has adopted the practice of using surface water for industrial applications instead of well water. Water is initially brought into a large water basin where sediments are allowed to settle. Surface waters contain silt in suspended form and dissolved organic and inorganic impurities. Several large pumps take suction off the basin and transfer the water to filters designed to remove suspended solids. Industrial filters provide an important part of the water treatment stage. Heat exchangers A heat exchanger allows a hot fluid to transfer energy in the form of heat to a cooler fluid without physical contact between the two fluids. A heat exchanger can provide heat or cooling to a process. Heat exchangers can be found in the following categories. Shell and tube Plate and frame Spiral Air-cooled Cooling towers Cooling towers are used by industry to remove heat from water. The internal design of the tower ensures good air and water contact. Hot water transfers heat to cooler air as it splashes on the boards inside the tower. The major portion of heat is stripped from the water by evaporation. The basic components of a cooling tower include a water basin, pump, and water makeup system at the base of the cooling tower. The internal frame is made of pressure-treated wood or plastic and is designed to support the internal components of the tower. A hot water distribution system is typically located on the top of the cooling tower. A fan may be used to enhance airflow through the cooling tower. Boilers Steam generators, or, as they are commonly called, boilers, are used by industrial manufacturers to produce steam. A boiler consists of an upper and a lower drum connected by tubes. The lower drum and water tubes are completely filled with water, while the upper drum is only partially full. This vapor cavity allows steam to collect and pass out of the header. Water is carried through tubes that flow into a heated chamber. As heat is applied to the water generating tubes and drums, the water circulates around the boiler, down the downcomer tube, into the lower drum, and back up the riser tube and steam generating tubes of the furnace. During normal operating conditions, steam rises into the upper drum and out the steam header. Steam generated in the boiler is replaced by makeup water. Furnaces 
Fired heaters, or furnaces, are used to heat up raw materials so they can produce products such as gasoline, oil, kerosene, plastic, and rubber. Furnaces are used in many processes, including crude distillation, cracking, and olefins production. The basic components of a fired heater include a tough metal shell surrounding a firebox, a convection section, and a stack. The inside of the furnace is lined with a special refractory designed to reflect heat. A battery of tubes passes through the convection and radiant sections and into a common insulated header that passes out of the furnace. Fluid flow is balanced through the tubes to prevent equipment or product damage. Airflow and oxygen content are controlled through burner and damper adjustments. The heat released by the burners is transferred through the tubes and into the process fluid. The fluid remains in the furnace long enough to reach operating conditions before exiting for further processing. Furnace designs include cylindrical, cabin, and box. Reactors A reactor is a vessel used to convert raw materials into useful products through chemical reactions. Reactors are designed to operate under a variety of conditions. They combine raw materials with a catalyst, gases, pressure, or heat. A catalyst is a material designed to increase or decrease the rate of a chemical reaction without becoming part of the final product. The shape and design of a reactor are dictated by the application it will be used in. The basic components of a reactor include a shell, a heating or cooling device, two or more product inlet ports, and one outlet port. A mixer may be used to blend the materials together. Distillation columns a simple distillation system is composed of a feed preheater, distillation tower, overhead condenser, accumulator, and reboiler. The preheated feed enters a feed tray or section in the tower. Part of the mixture vaporizes while the rest begins to drop into the lower sections of the tower. An exchanger known as a reboiler maintains energy balance on the column. Distillation columns or towers come in two designs. Plate Tray Packed As the vapor rises up the tower, it contacts the liquid descending the tower. This contact occurs on trays or the surface of packing and results in the mass transfer of material from the liquid phase to the vapor phase and from the vapor phase to the liquid phase. At each tray, the vapor leaving the tray has a higher concentration of the lower boiling material than the vapor entering the tray. Also, the liquid leaving the tray has a higher concentration of the higher boiling material than the liquid entering the tray. The lightest component goes out the top of the column in a vapor state and is passed over the cooling coils of a shell and tube condenser. As the hot vapor comes into contact with the coils, it condenses and is collected in the overhead accumulator. Part of this product is sent to storage, the other is returned to the tower as reflux. The heavier component flows out the bottom of the column in a liquid state. A distillation column can separate two, three, or more products from a mixture for use in other industrial applications. Extraction and other separation equipment 
Extraction and other separation equipment include Single-stage extraction units Extraction columns Absorption columns Stripping columns Adsorbers Scrubbers Crystallization Solvent dewaxing To revise the learned material answer the questions What is the difference between rotary and stationary equipment? What is the purpose of pumps and compressors? What is the primary difference between a pump and a compressor? What is the purpose of tanks? Give some examples of storage tank designs. Describe the function of industrial valves. Name types of valves. What is the difference between the terms? liquid, and, fluid. What is the purpose of a heat exchanger? What is the purpose of a cooling tower? What is the purpose of a boiler? What is the purpose of a fired heater? What is the purpose of a distillation column? Give some examples of extraction and separation equipment.